This show is brought to you by HostBaby.com, web hosting for musicians. Welcome to episode 16 of Music Marketing Monday. We spent the last two episodes, which I believe is 14 and 15, discussing how to get the attention of uh, music festival and fair organizers and bookers. Two entire episodes, but now that we've got you booking the gigs, now it's the day of the show. How do you make the most of it? Well, pull up a lawn chair, grab yourself something out of the cooler. We're going to talk about that today. Information, inspiration, motivation for the modern musicpreneur. Time to start your week right. Here it comes, Music Marketing Monday, with your host, Bob Baker, Mr. Buzz Factor, and Billy Grizak, the music marketing mind. Ready? Ready? Are you sure? Set. Here it comes. Swing, baby. I just want to start off by saying thank you. Thank you to all of the people that have been downloading this show, listening to the show, sharing the show, telling their friends about the show. What show? It is Music Marketing Monday with me, the music marketing mind, Billy Grizak, and me, Bob <laughs> Baker, Mr. Buzz Factor, et cetera, et cetera. Good morning, Billy. Hey, good morning, Billy. Bob! It's the Music Marketing Monday Morning Zoo. <laughs> and, you know, hopefully this one will be out in the morning because I have uh, some gigs out of town this weekend. So uh, this one's going to have to be uploaded, like, you know, before I uh, actually, uh, you know, yeah. it'll be there for Monday morning. Yeah. I wonder how many people actually listen to it on a Monday. And, and when they listen to it, let's say on a Tuesday or a Friday, whatever, do they feel odd? Like, ooh, this is the wrong day. Or they just, they just enjoy it anyway, I'm sure. Is it like having your Tuesday underwear on on right. Friday? Yeah. It's you know? kind of like the Garanimals of podcasts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyway, so yeah, I'm feeling festive. You feeling festive? I am. In fact, I went to uh, – it's, it's the beginning of the, uh, you know, the, the summer uh, outdoor activities. I actually went – we have a, a – an annual Shakespeare in the Park thing here in St. Louis, like a lot of cities do. And I went and saw Henry the Fourth the other night uh, under the under the starlit sky. And so, yeah, we're kicking it into gear here. Yeah, I've actually done several uh, outdoor shows uh, uh, already, and they're just uh, they don't stop. They just they just keep going and going and going. So uh, it's going to be a pretty busy summer for me. So I'm pretty excited about that. And- and that's the whole thing. Yeah. If you live in any kind of major city, there's like, it just seems like, I mean, even when you make plans with friends, just as somebody, you know, going in the audience, uh, there's, sometimes there's like three or four different things going on in the same night. And so, you know, there's a lot of music being played at a lot of these fairs and festivals. And like, I guess that's the, what, what we've been saying is why not you? Why, why shouldn't you be on one of those stages getting in front of new people? And so that's why we spent two episodes talking about how to book those gigs and you giving your insider tips, Billy. That was really cool. Cool, man. Yeah. I mean, that. It's been working for me for, you know, 30 plus years and uh, I'm still doing it. So it's not like, uh, you know, I'm just kind of sitting back saying, yeah, my day, we used to play the fairs, you know, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still doing, you know, tons of them. Uh, next week I'm doing uh day out with Thomas in Green Bay, Wisconsin for, uh, five or six days, you know, I mean, it's, it's, wow. you know, you know, lots of stuff. Anyway, uh, what I like to talk about today, uh, and Bob, we, we've discussed this is not only, you know, once you get the gigs, a lot of people think their job's done. It's also, uh, kind of a, a sister act, so to speak to the people that think once you get a record deal, you're done. And then the magic record, uh, company fairies are going to take care of you and everything's all hunky dory from that point on. Not so. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know the gold reality yeah and as we we pointed out in the last couple of episodes i think especially episode 15 if you missed that you might want to go back and check that out the, the, these are like unique animals they have uh, this whole fair and festival gig it's not like a typical bar gig or you know coffee shop gig um they're unique and so it takes a unique sort of way to approach them to make the most of them absolutely so uh what i'd like to uh, focus on and what we'd like to focus on today and help you uh, is to have the most successful fair music uh, festival uh, outdoor event possible. All right. So uh, I've got some thoughts and some tips, things you can do before the show, during the show, after the show, and also in prep for your return appearance next time. Yeah, very, very cool. I know you have a lot of experience with this. I've done the occasional outdoor festival, but you've got far more experience. So I'll, as I have in these last couple, I'm going to let you steer the bus, and I'll just add some color commentary as we go along. So uh, so where do you want to start? 
Mr. Well, I wanna, uh, well, Mr. Baker, what I, what, I, what, I, what I would do is I would tell you that next week you're getting the wheel back, so you better think about what we're going to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, you, this may be a four-parter. You never know. It depends on how this goes. <laughs> all right. All right. Here we go. So first off, um, I'm going to... I'm just going to kind of bounce around here because it's just so coming off the top of my head. Um, one of the things that you want to do, uh, if possible, if you're playing a fair and festival, uh, is go to it. Now, this sounds crazy, but if it's within your ability, if it's a local fair or festival, if it's not too far away, uh, you know, uh, you know, maybe you want to play at this festival next year, whatever, go there, see, see the layout, get the layout of the land, check out the bands, check out the sound systems. Uh, how and observe how easy it is to get in and out of the area and where your vehicle gets parked. All these things actually are going to turn into wonderful marketing techniques as as we move on today. But it's a really good idea to get a feel for the event before you go to the event, uh, especially even if you're in, uh, let's say you're playing there this year and it's a multi-day event and say you're on day three, uh, it would behoove you in, on many levels to get your butt out there and uh, see what's going on like day one, day two. Very, yeah, smart advice. That's obviously easier if it's a local gig and, yeah, if it's, if it's multi-day. Um, but, yeah, I guess I can see where you want to get the lay of the land. Exactly. And one of the biggest things is you don't want to be rushed because if, if you're rushed, you're not going to put on a good show, okay? So remember, if you think it takes an hour to get there and normally it takes you about uh, 45 minutes to get your gear in, I'd say add at least two extra hours uh, before you're planning on getting to where you're going. Because typically, you got to remember, if it's a very popular event, let's say like Summerfest or something like that, uh, or uh, you know, Country USA or one of those things, you got to remember there's thousands of people heading in the same direction you are, and as you're heading there, um, it bottlenecks, it slows down. I actually missed a show once uh, because I just couldn't get into the grounds and couldn't get to the stage in time to play. I mean, I got there like five minutes after my slot was over. You know, uh, fort- oh, fortunately, I, it's a job I still have. They understood because, you know, it's a, you know, but you don't want to take that risk. You know what I'm saying? Now, right. And, and I hate, I just get all stressed out when I'm running late for something like that. And so you're, you're not in the right frame of mind, even if you do manage to throw everything up on the stage and, you know, start on time. It's just not a very good frame of mind to be in to put, put out your best performance. So absolutely. Yeah. Allow yourself plenty of time. Right. And also uh, success, having a successful gig doesn't always necessarily mean drawing the people, which we'll talk to. We'll, mm-hmm. t- we'll talk about that too, but success also means being prepared. Okay. Here's mm-hmm. some things you got to do. You just have to do it, whether you want to or not. Bring the following things. If you use acoustic drums, make sure you have spare heads. If you uh, a guitar player, make sure you have your spare uh, strings and know where your guitar picks are. I can't tell you how many guitar players I've run into, including myself, that is always scrounging around trying to find a guitar pick right before the show. I mean, it's happened to me many times. Now I've made strides to have that not happen. But uh, make sure you have your extra guitar picks. Bring something to drink. Uh, stay hydrated. Bring towels. Uh, it's hot out there. Bring changes of shirt. Don't set up in the clothes that you're going to perform in because you're going to just look like crap. And if mm-hmm. you look like crap, people are going to think you are crap, you know, because people hear of their eyes. You know what I'm saying? These right. are all things that you might not be thinking about, but it's, you know, bring a spare guitar because if you break the string, you can't take 15 minutes if you only have a 30 minute slot, you know? And some bands just don't do this stuff. You know what I mean? And this is the, these are the things that can make or break. Uh, your performance at a festival, especially your first time in. You you mentioned the heat, which is I know is something that that got, I'm not really thrilled with when I'm you know perspiring while I'm uh, while I'm playing. Oh, it always happens because you kind of work up your your energy. But how about uh, a stage fan? Um, you know, this is a different type of fan, the one that spins and <laughs> moves air. You know, but that you can't always rely on the venue to have stage fans. So if you yeah get overheated, wouldn't that that'd be a helpful thing? To we 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 always bring fans. We have um, big fans for the drummer. We have side fans, and then we have these little uh, they're um, you buy them at like you know your your discount stores. They're um, what's that company? Black and Decker. They're yellow fans that sit on the ground. And they actually use them typically to dry carpets and things like that and have, like, nozzles you can aim. You sit them right under your microphone stand in a very low profile. You don't see them. And you aim it right up at your face, and those things cool you right off. Plus, you get that sexy windblown hair look, too. Oh, you know? yeah, man. That's right. I mean, you get 1980s videos. White Snake, man. Here I go again. Oh, do we have to pay them royalties if I sing? I hope not. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Anyway. so uh, but Good these, stuff. This yeah. is important stuff. And check it out, man. Extension cords for all your fans and stuff. 
you can't count on the venue to supply you extension cords for things that are not musical. In fact, to be brutally honest, you just can't count on the venue for anything. So always bring more than you need, at least the first time around, until you, you kind of have a feel for the festival, okay? Right. Now, uh, a few other things you need to know. Bring somebody to sell your merchandise, unless, of course, uh, the venue is selling for you. Some of the bigger events, they actually have people man the tables for you because, tell them why, Bob. Uh, they want a, probably a percentage of your sales. Bingo, bingo. Right. So if you know if you're selling your CDs for ten bucks, I hate to say it, guys. As much as it pains you, you're going to have to raise your CD price to fifteen or twenty dollars, or you're not going to make any money because they take a sometimes a huge percentage depending on the venue and how popular it is, et cetera, et cetera. And in, and in this case, they're not necessarily manning your merch booth. There's probably a general merch booth for everything, and you just are part of that like store, or how, are they well, actually? I've seen both, but typically at, at when you're playing uh, most fairs and festivals, you're on a dedicated stage, uh, and they actually have like people there that count you in and count you out at your table. Oh, okay, cool. Which is really nice, you know. Uh, if you're a headliner, of course, and you know, you're probably not even listening to this. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you're, a, you know, if you're uh, Aerosmith or whatever, you can bring your own people in and do your own thing. But uh, you know, us guys, uh, the working musicians out there that are uh, responsible for eighty percent of the entertainment out there, uh, they count us in and count us out. So be aware of that. Okay. Cool. Also, when you go to this event. You know, this might end up being four parts because I, I, I just don't know where to stop. We haven't even, we haven't even gotten to play yet, you know. When you, when you go to That's the what event, I mean. I'm not going to be driving for a while. I'm going to be riding shotgun for about four more episodes. I know, man. But, when you go to the event, like, uh, to pre-check it out and even during the day while you're there, make sure that your band and your friends, even though you don't want to, a lot of people don't want to be, like, boasting about themselves. Well, that's just too darn bad. Make sure you're wearing your band T-shirts with your website address on them and walk around the grounds. With these shirts on, to make sure your girlfriends, your wives, your friends, your kids, everybody's wearing everything you want to sell walking around the grounds. Because when people see it, if it's cool, they're going to want to buy it. And then they'll ask you, where do you get that? You say, oh, man, I'm playing over here on this stage. Why don't you come over? Now we're starting to get into the strategies of getting people to show up to the show. Nice. All right. Now, another thing you can do to get people. Now, let's say you've, uh, you're playing uh, an event you've never played before, but you do have a great mailing list, right? And you've told all the people on your mailing list you're going to be there, and you've been doing uh, uh, text messaging to the people that are right in town that you have permission to text and say, hey, man, don't forget, we're going to be at the fair today. You know, uh, come on down. Uh, oh, and by the way, if, if you come down because I text you, I'll give you a free something if you show up today. You know, if you bring five people, I'll give everybody a free something, whatever it takes. Because you, you really, in a fair and festival atmosphere, especially fairs, festivals are set up where people are going to see music, okay? You have to understand that. They're there to see music, and unless you're, quite frankly, awful for some reason, uh, you should have people watching you because it's about music, okay? But at a fair, you have to draw people in, county fairs, state fairs, because there's the midway, there's the arcade, there's the games, there's the... Uh, the, the livestock, the drag racing, all the stuff, you are just one of the things there. And you have to find a way to cut through the noise and get people to your stage. The more people you get to your stage, the more people will come to your stage. It's a catch-22. You know right, what I'm saying? Like the, the crowd, the herd mentality. Yeah, if you can get a small initial group over there, then people are going to go, "Whoa, what are they checking out? And then it, it, it'll, it'll build, I guess, over the course of your set, I'm assuming. Right. Uh, now, I'm going to tell you how to stack this, these odds in your favor. All right? Now, this is some more of this insider, insider information stuff that uh, I've used and some of the uh, other more uh, successful uh, acts I've seen all across the country. Because you got to remember, I just don't work in one area. Sometimes people forget that about me. Like, they say, oh, you do kids' music and you're in Wisconsin. But what people don't, remember, uh, don't know, maybe, is that, you know, I started out in New Jersey playing in uh, country bands and funk bands. That's interesting. And then I worked my way to Las Vegas, where I played for a long time in casinos. Then I went to California. Then I was in a show band, and I've I've, I've played in forty nine states. So <laughs> we should not everything. we should not pigeonhole you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I really do know what I'm talking about because people say, "Oh, well, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just some dumb kid singer," you know. And the truth of the matter is, I'm well, I might be 
dumb, but I'm not <laughs> yeah. just a kid singer. You, know? so. you are a dumb kid singer, but you're also a rock singer and a funk player. And a, yeah, you know, yeah, all you know, the things. country, show guy, you know, whatever. But anyway. so, so you've seen it all over the course of many years, and, and, and th- thus you are truly qualified to deliver insider information. I know this about you, Bill. Yeah, and on both sides of the, the coin, because I also was a booking agent, and I worked for National Entertainment Resources, and actually had to go to these fairs and festivals booking hiring and managing talent too as well right. so that's and also doing sound so i mean i've done a couple of things anyway well, so i got my notebook out i got my pen ready i'm ready to take some notes the insider information and go all right first thing, <laughs> first thing you want to do this is really important you want to bring people with you we call them ringers all right and this is you might think this is cheating and if you think it's cheating you don't know how the real world works i learned actually this from johnny carson Johnny Carson used to bring in a half dozen girls that had the most hysterically addictive laughs you've ever heard. And they they sat in his audience night after night, paid to laugh at his jokes. And they would laugh so hysterically and so infectiously that everyone else would laugh. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. So what I recommend you do is you stack the deck in your favor. When you bring people with you, you bring your wives, your girlfriends, uh, your kids, your, your other fans, you need to train them. This is important to actually put on a show of their own. In other words, I can't tell you how many times I've sat, seen bands that bring their wives and girlfriends and friends. They'll sit huddled in a corner, talking to each other, not even paying attention to the band half the time, or looking bored or making you know daggers at the girls that are looking at the guys on the stage. I mean, come on, let's be honest. You know, right? What you need to do is you need to train your family and your friends and your tribe to be visually and most importantly, vocally excited about your show. Because that's, that's cool. Or you understand where I'm coming from, right? Right. Because yes. people will hear people screaming and cheering and dancing, and the kids are running around, and the girls are all up there with cameras taking pictures of the band. And, and the next thing you know, there's going to be more girls taking pictures of the band and more kids running around and guys checking the band out because all the girls are up front checking out the band. I mean, it, your your crowd that you bring with you to the fair and festival can make or break your show. That is that is true. It's funny. A couple times over the years, uh, people have jokingly talked about starting a service, and they would call it I don't know they called it rent a groupie or a rent a rent a rent a crowd or whatever, where 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 you could yeah bring out you know like almost like so the hiring a you know singing a telegram or something you hire a group of people who come out and and do that that'd be a, that's not what you're talking about you're talking about people no. that you already know but still the idea is the same yeah but you seed it with people that are showing their enthusiasm who genuinely like your music to begin with anyway right now right. having said that now here's where a lot of people are just going to say billy you're an idiot and I'm not listening to you anymore but here's the deal check this out don't think for a minute that all those girls that were chasing the beatles we're chasing the Beatles because they wanted to. Don't think for a minute that all the people that were taking pictures of Elvis Presley shaking his pelvis were there because they were interested in his pelvis. Colonel Tom Parker, Brian Epstein, all these people that are managers of these acts create buzz, and you're Mr. Buzz Factor. Mm. And what a lot of people don't realize is that buzz is manufactured at the beginning, and then once you see it going on, it builds. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. You know, if I had the opportunity to hire 100 people that would ultimately make 1,000 people show up, I think I would do it. I mean, maybe that's yeah. – you could say that that's not, that's not real, that's not organic, but you know what? If it was good enough for Elvis Presley and the Beatles and Fabian and all these other guys, and not to mention the movie stars and, and the runway and the red carpet and all that, why don't we do it? I'm just saying. Yeah. It's just yeah, something you, to think about. You know, it's, I'm, I'm having a realization here that even though these last couple of episodes were about fairs and festivals and how to book them and play them, we always – these things can be applied to all sorts of things. I mean, you know, the preparation for the gig. But this whole thing about, yeah, having some uh, – not plants, but just people that are showing their enthusiasm. Can I quickly share a story, uh, something that I learned? It's not related to this exactly because it didn't involve other people, but it just really like opened my eyes to this whole herd mentality type of thing. So – 
uh, I may have mentioned it here and there that years ago I used to do stand-up comedy and I would do uh, song parodies as part of my act. And it was many years ago. I haven't done that in a long time. But I used to pretty actively perform around town. So, and, and at the time I had this cassette, that's how long ago it was, of my parodies and some of my bits and all this stuff that I would sell at, uh, at uh, gigs. And, and, um, and so uh, I'd play this show over in Alton, Alton, Illinois, right across the uh, river from St. Louis here. And uh, I remember, um, you know, uh, 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 plugging my CD, or, or, I mean, my, uh, my cassette, you know, and then I would, I would park right there where they were leaving. But for some reason, like half of the crowd, like or, or a third or more of the crowd, had just kind of filed past and everybody was kind of ignoring me, even though they knew, you know, how, the, how people, when they know you're selling something and they're not going to buy, they don't even hardly look at you, you know, because like, they yes. feel bad. Don't make eye contact. Yeah. And then like one person stopped and went, how much are those again? And then another, and then somebody else did. And then another cool thing was I had these like stacks of promo uh, photos um, that were there were actually I don't think they were lithographs or something they weren't the regular like high, higher quality uh, photos but I had them in there I think mostly uh, I didn't even I don't even sell them or anything but somebody said hey would you autograph one of those pictures if I bought a, a, a tape and I went sure and then the person behind them said hey I would like one of those too and before you know it as people were filing by they started noticing there was a small line forming um, and then like <laughs> and then before I knew it, like half of the rest of the crowd end up stopping and buying because they saw there was this line there hey he's giving away the autograph photo too they started going working its way down the line and this the, the, the shift that happened because a couple of people stopped and started this snowballing trend you know it was really eye-opening for me and so any way you can create that um you know if you have to give it a little bit of a an artificial initial push you know to start it so be it but that's a great point to make you know i mean honestly i mean if if we're in the business of entertainment i mean there's a lot of people out there want to be like serious artists and all that and that's cool I, i get it you know and and uh but even like the Kirk Cobains and the Bob Dylans, they're master showmen. They were master showmen. They are master showmen. And, and, and they've created a lot of their own buzz, not necessarily as organic as people think. Because, you know, one of the things about being in show business, we're all sort of magicians. It's all misdirection, you know, and, and direction. And uh, you need to embrace that if you plan to be super successful in this field. You can. I mean, I got, I have the show I do, you know, called, you know, uh, quit your day job, be a full time musician. And, and you can do it. Uh, but you got, what are you willing to do? You know what I mean? How far are you willing to go is really what it is. All right. right. So anyway, getting back to, uh, some things you could do to get, uh, real people, not your plants to the show. This is great at fairs and festivals. Uh, go to Vista print or wherever you, you buy signs inexpensively and get a whole bunch of yard signs. They have like these little, White signs that you buy, and they got like little uh, metal um, pokies at the bottom, little metal sticks, and you stick them in the lawn. You've seen them, right? Yeah, the kind of thing like when, when you're selling the house or your politicians right, right, right. or, you know, vote right. for so and so. Yeah. So so you can get them really cheap. In fact, if you uh, follow Vistaprint, you like every couple of weeks you can get one for free. You just do that for a whole year, you know? They give them away uh, for promotion. But anyway, get a whole bunch of just put the name of your band and an arrow. Mm. Or. If your name of your band is not a draw, this is where a lot of people have to lose the ego to be successful. You put something like the world's greatest rock and roll band with an arrow. Yeah, and what I would suggest too is also um, instead of just naming promoting the name of the band or focusing the band, focusing on the benefit, like yeah. you know the best you know the best rock and roll dance party or whatever. Um, you know, put something that um, that they're going to enjoy doing. Uh, you know, f- f- point out the experience instead of just the band. You know, absolutely. Well, one thing I did was with these little signs, I put free guitars with an <laughs> arrow. And when you got there, we had these little blow up guitars. We paid forty cents each for them, and we just gave them out, man. You know, and we had a huge crowd because everybody wanted a free guitar. You wow. know. But anyway, so you get a whole bunch of these signs, and then what you do is you uh, actually direct everyone to your area. And or you could just say rock music this way or reggae music this way because the people are looking for like these multiple stages looking for a certain type of music you know and if it's a stage where you have like four or five reggae bands on this stage and two to three country bands on this stage you have an opportunity to do one of our favorite things about what's that partner up mm-hmm. and you both make the signs and then you go around and you just start putting them all over the fairgrounds aiming people directing people at your stage. Do you have to get the okay of the organizers, or do you talk to anybody before you do that, or you just kind of keep your fingers crossed that it's okay? <laughs> I never, I never have, and I've been doing it for years. 
Okay. You know, and and besides, why would why would they say no? I mean, there's a lot of signs that are being put out there, and it's all about trying to make the event better. So, in my experiences, you know, ask for forgiveness if they don't like it. Yeah. If you ask it, for permission, it gives them an opportunity to say no. It's not like you're saying screw the arcades, come and see us instead. You're just you're just making them aware no. of what you now, got going on. Right. Having yeah. said that, let me tell you some other things you could do to generate crowds. There's a magician guy. Uh, also, he does uh, a game show, and, and he does magic in a game show. It's based on Survivor. It's pretty interesting. Uh, Survivor and Gilligan's Island together. It's kind of cool. And um, what he does, really interesting, is before his show, like 15 minutes before his show, he has like this little scooter and a megaphone. <laughs> and he literally drives down in front of the stage and, and hits all the things. says, 15 minutes to the show, 15 minutes to the show. You got to go down. It's part of your admission. It's free at the admission. The runway, the midway will still be here. The food will still be here, but this is the only show today. Come and see the show. And he just basically, you know, gets out there and just screams at people with this megaphone. And, and I don't know, man, but he had twice as many people to his show compared to every one of my shows because I'm too lazy to do it, you know? So at wow. that time, have you it's ever amazing. Been, have you ever been to a Renaissance fair or festival? I, I love Renaissance fairs. I go all the time. Yeah, they they and they have events like that, and yeah, they have this almost like carnival. I know this is going to turn a lot of people off. I'm not saying you have to do this, but it's almost like carnival barkers. Yeah, for like the you know 15, 20 minutes prior to a show, you're trying to get people to gather that initial crowd. You know, and see the death defying, you know, amazing, you know, this or, or that. But uh, but I guess it, it works, right? It's but but the question is, how badly do you want to get people to your show? I mean, you know, you know what? I had somebody. I did a speaking engagement recently. Where I told, uh, where I said at, at the engagement, I said, you know, if you want people to do stuff at your show, you have to tell them what to do or ask them what to do. Like, in other words, you sing a song, you say, by the way, that was from my new CD. I got some copies here if you want some later. And this one guy says to me, why do I have to do that? I mean, what do you mean? He goes, well, I'm already doing that, right? I mean, what do you mean? He goes, well, I'm up there singing my songs. And I'm saying, so? He says, are people buying? Well, no, not really. I says, but I'm up there playing my songs. Isn't that enough? I'm up there playing my songs. Doesn't that say to them, I have songs and CDs and you should buy them? No. No. <laughs> so, guys, you know, think about think about it. It's all up to you. There's There are proven, simple ways to get crowds almost everywhere if you're willing to do it. But every time you say, no, I'm not willing to do that, or no, I'm not willing to do that, or no, I'm not willing to do that, every time you do that, you're taking – the edge off and the edge off and the edge off. And then one day you, you, you're up there playing to nobody and you're upset and unhappy and complaining about it. But you can do something about it. And these are some of the things you can do anyway, in my right. opinion. So, yeah. And then the whole, the whole topic of, again, it's more of a general concept, but it works in fairs and festivals. But anything, anything is that the thing about figuring out what you want people to do and telling them to do it in marketing terms. It's a call to action. And, and really, I actually encourage people whenever they're, putting out content online or whatever you're, whatever you're doing something to promote yourself, always ask yourself the question, what do I want people to do when they see this thing or when they read this thing or when they listen to this thing? And then try as often as you can to incorporate a call to action into that piece of communication, you know, absolutely subscribe, buy, attend, you know, whatever that is, think of a one word verb that you want people to do and then ask them to do it. You know? And then the other thing you can do, is is and if you don't want to be like the the Barker type person, uh, is you send a couple of your guys out, your lead singer, guitar players, out into the crowd to different different areas before the shows with their guitars, and just have them stand there and sing while another member, maybe somebody that doesn't play guitar and sing, has the little cards with your show times written down on them, mm. and say come to our stage at this time, maybe put a little map on there. Nobody does that, Bob. Mm -hmm. Half the reason people don't come to your stage and see your shows, they don't know where the damn stage is and what time you're playing. I can't tell you how many times people show up, oh, I missed you, darn it. Took me so long to find you. But if you had made it easy for them to find you, you know, is that what we always talk about every week? Making it easy for people oh, yeah. to come to your shows, making it easy for them to buy your stuff, make it easy to be your fan. Make it for easy for people to support you. You know, you yeah. ask for their support, but then you don't give them any instructions and they go to their website or your website and they can't figure out what, what, where to click to do the thing you want them to do, you know. So, yeah. So, anyway, that's that's a lot of before the show stuff. And it's before every show, you know. If you have three shows in a day, two shows, one show, get out there, meet people, shake hands, take pictures, ask them to post it up, get, do, 
get selfies with people, get them to put them up on their Facebook, tell them to put it up on Twitter and Facebook and say, meet me at the stage. I just took my picture of this lead singer from this band. I'm going to be over there in the front row, everybody. Foursquare. Foursquare. Come meet me at this stage, at this festival, at this time. You know, this is how you get people to the shows. And again, if your core group is vocal and jumping and dancing, everyone else will. Yeah, as I said earlier, Billy, this uh, is obviously going into at least one, if not two more episodes on this topic. But it's good stuff. It's not just about fairs and festivals. A lot of the stuff that we're talking about here can be applied to your gigs and your career, no matter what or when you listen to this. So, uh, so yeah, I think it's probably we need to bring this one to a close, tell people what we're up to, uh, and then uh, do more next week. Sound good? That sounds super fantastic. And I know, yeah, we both have some exciting things going on. And does the, do you want to tell people more about your uh, full, make a living as a musician? Sure, uh, sure. Things that you're offering. Sure, sure. And uh, basically, what I've been doing is live web shows. It's a uh, like a webcast little uh, TV show uh, that you can uh, tune into once a week, usually on Mondays. And uh, they're at concertwindow.com. Concertwindow.com. And my show is called Quit Your Day Job, Be a Full Time Musician. And uh, that show is really wonderful because it's in real time. I take questions and I give advice uh, specific. So if you have any questions on the things you're hearing here today, uh, I can get into great detail with you. We have great conversations with people. Uh, So if you haven't done Concert Window before, you want to try it, try it out. It's really awesome. And I'm also going to be launching a new uh, sister podcast to that called uh, quit your day job, uh, be a full-time musician, or maybe something else. I haven't decided yet. But I'm going to be interviewing people that actually do it that are actually making money in the music business in some way and supporting themselves doing it yeah i, I guess yeah yeah that's yeah. that's awesome yeah, i applaud you that's all you need is another podcast yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and another, another another thing that's 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 cool is that anything else you want to plug or you want me to uh, go ahead and well just just if you want to reach me at uh facebook it's music market mind otherwise it's music marketing and uh info at music marketing and now Mr. Buzz Factor. Yeah, so I've already, uh, by the time you listen to this, I'll probably be a week, or, or actually less than a week into uh, my first ever fan funding or crowdsourcing campaign, whatever you, wanna, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I've been thinking about doing this for a while, and so I finally pulled the trigger. I'm using a website called Rocket Hub instead of Kickstarter and some of the others. And my friend Ariel Hyatt used it about a year and a half ago for her campaign. I really liked the way the site was set up, and you know all this, uh, and, and I uh, went back to it in recent weeks and saw that they were really doing some great stuff. It's not an all or nothing. Uh, you know, you raise, you get to keep whatever you uh, whatever you raise. But I'm basically um, this is about a, a, a new book that I want to publish called The Empowered Artist. But I quickly realized that it's really more, uh, it's about much more than the book. It's really I'm I'm looking at this sort of a launching pad for perhaps a new phase of my career, um, where you know for years I've been obviously I've been talking about marketing. I've been I mean I've been uh, speaking to musicians, um, but I've also widened the net over the years, and I've started, you know, uh, 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 spreading this message to creative people of all kinds because that reflects who I am. I'm not just a musician. I'm not just a writer. I also paint, and I also do acting and improv comedy. And you know, I, I mentioned I used to do stand up. Um, so a lot of this, I know there's a, there's a message that creative people in general need to hear. And instead of just talking about marketing, I kind of I'm sort of waking creative people up to the. Uh, to the to the value that they have, I think our our value as artists is downplayed far too much. You know, I mean, when, when you think about cultures or civilizations of the past, the things that you remember are the art and the architecture and the clothing and the music and the poetry that came out of that era. You know, so it's I mean, so the impact that creative people have on society is immense, and I think we forget that. And so I'm out to remind people it's a movement, it's a mission that I'm on. Uh, but this book is just one part of that. And so between now and July second, 2014, I'm doing this this campaign and so um, you can go to thebuzzfactor.com and click on either the blog or podcast links and I'm I'm also uh, doing a 30 day series where I'm releasing a video and a podcast or short audio every day called 30 ways to become an empowered artist and that's pretty an amb- ambitious uh, project that's all, those are all free but sort of to uh, draw attention to uh, this campaign while delivering a whole bunch of value so there you go have you seen a movie called Monuments, Ben? I don't think that I have. You should. And everybody else out there should. Because if you have any question about the value of art, music, any type of the arts to our 
uh, culture and our society. This movie will change your mind, change your viewpoint forever on how valuable you are as an artist, as a musician, as an author, as a painter, a painter that makes great pictures of Mr. Spock, for instance. Yes. <laughs> You're still hanging on to it, unfortunately. Yeah, so, but anyway, seriously. What, what, though, what is the movie called again? It's called Monuments Men. It's with George Clooney and a bunch of other fantastic actors. But uh, Monuments Men? Monuments Men, yeah. And it's basically, and I think it just went out on video. And uh, basically, it's a true story about these guys that went out there and tried to get all of the European art and sculptures and paintings back from Adolf Hitler when he was trying to take it all uh, away from the Europeans. Uh, it's very interesting. Wow. I'll have to check that out. I'll yeah. Like- but but, it, but it, it goes really well with your movement because I do feel that we're undervalued uh, as artists. Uh, and uh, we are really the glue that keeps uh, society together. It's, you know, it's it's entertainment and all that, but it's more than that. You know, it's, it's the human it soul, is. man. So. And so I, and I, man, and I think we're mostly undervalued by ourselves. I think if we, if if, if creative people everywhere realize their value, not not to be cockier, but but just to have a, yeah. a sort of uh, ownership of that value, I think people would start what's showing up in the world in a in a more powerful way, and and people would take us more seriously. So, hey everybody, get out there and support Bob because Bob has been supporting us for years. And I'll tell you, man, if it wasn't for Bob. I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing. Not not with the success that I have. So get out there and support him. At where, Bob? Well, uh, I mean, there's any number of all my websites are pr- pr- promoting it, but go to thebuzzfactor.com. And I'll, I'll in the show notes on my site, I'll also link directly to the uh, yeah to the fan funding page. And you can go to rockethub.com and search for Bob Baker, and it should come right up too. Awesome. So uh, I guess we're going to go back to the uh, fairs again next week. Man. We just- are. There's more to this, man. <laughs> it, it may be. Who knows? Maybe the next ten episodes. No. It's, it's good stuff, though, Billy. So thank right, you for thanks, sharing man. your wisdom and your insider knowledge. And uh, let's uh, let's reconvene next Monday. Sounds great, man. All Bye, right. everybody. So long. Are you still there? Excellent! Now would be a good time to visit hostbaby.com for your free 30-day trial. Of course!